The NCAA is now having schools pay student athletes 20 plus million dollars a year in revenue sharing, and there are Big 12 programs that can't afford that. What happens to them? This the Locked On Big 12 Lock On Baylor crossover. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy May, everybody. Drake Toll alongside Cameron Stewart here in the Locked On Big 12, Locked On Baylor crossover, because there are schools in this conference that cannot afford to move into the new era the NCAA is ushering us. Thank you for making these two shows your first listen every single day. This is Locked On Big 12, the number one podcast for the Big 12 in the country. Today we go over not just budget changes for Big 12 schools, but also Utah almost went to the ACC, the same Utah that plays Baylor in Week 2. And Gary Patterson will be a D1 football coach at the end of this season. To start, Big 12 programs now will make less money from the NCAA and have to pay more money in revenue sharing to to student athletes. And I look at a Kansas State or Texas Tech and say, yeah, you could probably move some stuff around and figure it out. I look at an Iowa State based on EADA numbers or even a Baylor and say, oh, this could be bad. And in essence, the schools that cannot have that kind of revenue sharing will not only get left behind, but be cut out altogether within Mm. the next decade. What do you do if you're a Baylor, a Houston, maybe even a BYU? It's just, it's not as easy as it is for these other schools. And how many times have we brought up this problem? Like I, I, I was on this show when they were laying out even before the Super League proposal, yep. uh, just that whatever it was, $120 million a year you need to go and get. Um, and I was like, well, Baylor can get that in a good year. And like last year they were at that. But yep. you can't bank on that every year. And I think it's the same way for TCU and Houston, those schools that you named. And even even, even a Tech in Kansas State, which I agree, like they've got enough uh, of that, that state money and they've got enough of an endowment. They can move some things around and, and they don't, you know, care as much about some of the Olympic sports, I guess, tech with track that as a lot of other schools do, um, they can move some money around and get there. Uh, but they're, I mean, those schools are going to be living on the edge every year. It, it goes back to, um, just this idea that so many schools, even in the power five can't afford to just give up 20 million a year. And I know this, this, the down from the Dellinger story last week, they were saying, well, you know, the NCAA could do a salary cap of whatever, 22 and a half million. It's not mandatory, but like, it's a good thing to suggest. Right. I'm like, then, then what, then we're still not there. We're not there yep. because either way it's these big schools are still winning out either way. Um, and until, until there's something I genuinely think like a hard salary cap, the way this is going, it, it's not going to be sustainable for, not just those little group of five schools, but right. a lot of our power five schools and not on, not just private schools, not just the Baylors and the Wakes and the TCUs, like it is going to be for an Iowa State or a Cincinnati or yeah, BYU could be thrown in there too. Yep. Like it's, it's, yep. it's just not, or Houston, the one we gave earlier, it's just not something that those schools can bank on every year. And if you have a bad year, which... I mean, that's that's in the cards for a lot of these schools. Like I'm talking bad year. You don't make a run in the NCAA tournament. And you don't make a major bowl game. Like, you could be screwed, I would Can't think. Can we afford it next year? Yeah. 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 That, and, and therein lies the issue. The For TCU and Baylor, the EADA numbers that Jeff Fuller has posted, that's a, that's a .gov site that talks about cumulative total athletic revenue for the last two decades, they're not bad. TCU and Baylor are not in an awful spot. Arizona State's in a good spot, but right now, in fact, those two are better than a lot of public schools in the Power Five. Yep. Yeah. Over those over that time frame, we don't know. Like Texas Tech and Kansas State are kind of middle of the pack, but it is so much of what have you done for me lately? For UCF and Houston and Cincy BYU, they haven't been a power school, so of course the revenue numbers are down. They haven't gotten power revenue numbers, but then it becomes, wait a second, how can we because of that trust you? to to still be valuable trust you to still pay mm-hmm. this 22 million dollars and somebody out there is saying oh yeah well we don't have to pay the 22 million. you don't but when everyone else is paying the 22 million dollars and you're not why am i as an athlete going to choose to go to your schools i think one of the other things you're going to see is i saw baylor just released that there's a new uh emphasis on nil collective 
Mm-hmm. We don't really need to focus on that as much anymore. There's no more like, hey, NIL collective leader, you are the one that's going to pioneer us in the future. No, 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 no. Now the school itself is paying the kids. In fact, the settlement is is the big part of that, right? It, yep. it, one of the big things is that it will be the schools themselves. And so, uh, I mean, even if you've got a dynamite collective, which Baylor was slow to get on, but I think is doing a lot better now. Um, even if you have that, it's just it's not the end all be all. In fact, if, if this settlement hadn't come up, then that's a huge thing for Baylor, right? To, to have that, a bolstered NIL collective. But now it's like, dang, I get the best knife at the gunfight. You know, yep. it, it's just, it, it doesn't, it, I'm not saying it's pointless. I'm glad that Baylor's doing it and some other schools like Baylor are doing it. But as, as long as schools are allowed to pay players, then there's no question at, at the very least, the private schools are at a massive disadvantage, massive disadvantage, even for how much they can raise tuition. Yeah, this is uh, uh, not good. If you're if you are even a Mississippi state, you're also looking in the mirror and saying, oh, hey, I, mm, who twenty two million dollars a year. I, I think there are those schools love that being in the, in the SEC and everything. But like, uh, uh, that's not not easy. Yes. So and and there are schools like I think Arkansas, which people often that's compare to a lot of Big 12, right. Big 12 yeah. teams. They are kind of right at that edge of, well, can we do this? And if you're Texas Tech and you suck for the next three years or you're Kansas State and you suck, you're anybody and you suck. You can't. You can't. You have to pick the number of, you know, we can get 15 million in revenue sharing, but can you do it every single year? The budget has to be set early enough. It can't be, hey, if we miss a bowl game for two years, can we still afford this? The answer must be yes to do it. And if the answer is not yes, you're going to get left behind in college athletics. Coming up, one school that didn't get left behind out of the Pac 12, Utah to the Big 12. Um, Baylor's week two opponent almost chose the ACC. This. It's the Locked On Big 12, Locked On Baylor crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, FanDuel is where I go when rent is coming up in a couple of days. And I say, FanDuel, I want to put $100 on the Dallas Stars to win this little series they're playing in the hockey. And maybe you don't watch hockey. And guess what? I don't really watch all that much hockey, but I do watch the Dallas Stars because I lived in the Dallas area for a while and I like the Stars. And because I can take that $100 and turn it into $150 or $200 with all kinds of props and lines at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 on bet spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count in both the NBA and the NHL at FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Yes. I've got the Stars winning the cup, by the way. Thank you. From that great fan duel read. It t- pains me to do, but I've got the Stars winning the whole thing. I think you're going to make some money, Drake. The Utah Utes almost All chose... Stanley Cup contenders. Close. Big the Utah time. Utes, they almost chose the ACC over the Big 12. This is a crazy Yahoo Sports article. Um, this is from a while ago, too, but it resurfaced this week on Twitter. And they, from Dellinger on August 1st, said that the ACC had seriously engaged in expansion discussions with Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Cal, and Stanford. And uh-uh, guess where uh-uh, Utah decided to go? And I find it so interesting that Utah fans are uh, bullish about their distaste for the Big 12 in, in a lot of circles, but the Big 12 was uh, the conference they chose over the ACC. And that was all from coming from Colorado's departure from the Pac-12. And Jim Phillips couldn't land them. And now Utah has made his way to the Big 12. And before we talk about the Week 2 matchup with Baylor, which is not a Big 12 game, give me, like, it, to me, those who are, oh, the ACC is so much better than the Big 12, even without Clemson, Florida State. Um, why are schools choosing the Big 12 and not the ACC? Honestly, it's a great question because at the time when I look at it, you know, before we had really gotten in the mud with everyone's TV deal and everything, and before we had heard, you know, obviously there's been rumors forever about Florida State, Miami, right, Clemson right, right. wanting to be an SEC school. But I think um, I, I do. I like, will say you've nailed mm-hmm. this early on. Like, but before we knew what we knew, it it did kind of the optic was there. Yes, because I mean, before we, what has transpired since then, yep. the ACC had their and still have their top end programs. Yep. The Big Twelve knew they were not going to. Right. And so I, I don't, obviously it's, it's all about the money in, at the end. So, you know, the cut and whatever of that, 
Um, but in terms of a competition standpoint and a, you know, can we be a top dog in this conference? Can this conference have stability standpoint? Both of those, I think, would have pointed to the ACC, which is what I found interesting uh, reading this article. Obviously, in hindsight, they've made the correct choice. The Big 12 is, is clearly more stable um, than whatever's going to happen to the ACC in the coming months and years here. Uh, but I, I did find that interesting, um, especially with having so many uh, Pac-12 partners come along uh, to the to the ACC. Because the, the one that you mentioned right there in the story is it was talking to them on top of Cal and Stanford and, and those schools. Whereas with the Big 12, there were rumors about doing the four yeah. corners thing and having them, but it was not like concrete, oh, they're going to nab Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, the way it sounded like it was going to be with the ACC, with those schools. So I did find that a little interesting. Right Which, choice at the end of the day, but... Might I mention, as it looks like the ACC is going to fall apart, and North Carolina is by day just a dumpster fire within itself right now from the Board of Regents to university leadership to the government within the state that can't decide exactly what it wants to do. Uh, you're in a bad spot if you're Jim Phillips in the ACC. And then stuff like this, you, you visit stuff like this and think, huh, of those schools, like Colorado's on the table and the, the discussions with Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, of of the fight, when you add in Cal and Stanford, when you talk about those schools, Cal and Stanford are the only two I don't want. Like that, 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 I mean, that's true. I, yeah. It is shocking to <laughs> me that the ACC could not land what the Big 12 could with Clemson and Florida State still in tow. And now we are on the forefront of Utah being a Big 12 school, whether the fan base on the whole likes it or not. And, and the ACC being up the proverbial creek without the proverbial paddle, I just don't understand why there's any, especially with SMU thrown in there, any <laughs> benefit to having those three schools in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Yeah, and the other thing that kind of stuck out to me was like, look, like you and I, were, and pretty much everyone listening, we are elbow deep in the Big 12. So we can't really see the Big 12 really from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. That said, um, like the ACC always felt lower tier. Um, you know what I mean? And so I'll compare with the two best teams, Clemson from the ACC, Oklahoma and the Big 12, the last college football playoff era. They always had the biggest question marks because nobody was watching those conferences on yep. the whole. And so it felt like, like, I don't know what the ACC's media deal is, but I know that I didn't watch them a lot. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. it wasn't in my face a lot the way the SEC and the Big Ten always have been. Um, and so I'm like, I, I just wonder in these meetings what the red flags were about the ACC because the ACC flopped on more than just these couple of schools in the Pac-12. Sure. Like they yeah. they have tried expansion before, it it hasn't worked, and and um, their their only good expansion was over 10 years ago now with the Syracuse and the pit. But and now it's like, what's that giving you? What you know Syracuse what I mean? Yeah. Louisville's yeah. giving you football finally. Um, but like a, a lot of those, those schools are not giving you a, a new footprint, a great big fan base, nor a lot of money. And so I'm, I, I, I'm wondering after reading that story, it was like, what happened in these meetings? Like what made the big 12 such a sexier pick to, to the ACC to, to, to your point, like, how could the ACC not get these schools with what they already had in tow? Like, how did they not yep. just ant magnifying glass the Big 12? Yep. Uh, and now Utah gets Baylor in week two. Is and Oh, a non-conference game, as they're calling it. <laughs> yeah. Is there any is there any way uh that um that goes well for you guys? I mean, sure, because they roll out the footballs. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, the way I'm looking right now, I, I can't, I can't confidently pick Baylor in most games because I just don't know what they're going to roll out and what they're going to look yeah. like. I mean, we're talking about a, a whole bunch of new players, a completely new offense, uh, all the while a coach who is coaching for his job. Usually, that comes yeah. along with a new coach, not one who is on his last legs here potentially. Mm. Uh, I, I, and my co-host on ESPN Central Texas, Matt Mosley. It is called the Matt Mosley Show have suggested why not like why even play this game find a, yeah. find a new opponent like oh, we, we know with covid 100%. like you you could do that uh, it actually happened a couple of years ago with Baylor when Sonny Cumbie went to La Tech and he was just like I don't really want to play you guys anymore can you guys yep. find someone else they're like oh sure 
Albany come down and play. Yep. Like if it's not going to be a Big 12 game, you already have um decent non-conference games. By that I mean Air Force. Um like why why even do it? Like why why not yeah. just like this is not the year to prove you did a, a you put together a good out of conference schedule. This go, is not the BCS days. Just go, go beat go Sam play Houston anybody, State. Dude. Go yes. beat Sam Houston State. UTEP go got a new coach. Bring them in here. Like come on, Just do, go do do something. I, I, so yeah, I mean it, it could be okay, but probably not. I, as I've picked Utah to win this conference, and yeah. for Baylor, I'm like I don't know how many games I could see them winning because I don't know. Uh, but who knows? Maybe they, maybe they beat Tarleton week one, sixty three to nothing, and we're all in again. Right that way. Line and sinker. Right that way. And and you know maybe maybe Tarleton runs a very similar offense to Cam Rising and Utah. In, in Utah. Sure. Yeah. See you, and, see you, Ryan Seckles. Okay. And uh, Utah falters against you know whoever they play week one, New Hampshire Their or something. Bus falls off. A Cliff pregame, good. Uh, uh, that could geez, that could that tilt that, things that Baylor's direction. Sure, Utah possibly. is a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Mountains there. Uh, coming up, yeah. Gary Patterson is going to be a head Division One football coach. This is Locked On Big Twelve, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Look, dude eBay Motors is where I go because I'm very good at crashing my car and having things fall off of it. I can get superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. I have a Nissan Maxima sitting outside my house in Savannah, Georgia, and that thing has a plastic piece that's been dragging on the ground for about four different weeks. So I said, you know what, eBay Motors, what is this plastic piece? Can I cut it off? Can I buy another one from you? And I sure could with eBay's guaranteed fit. They have 122 million parts. Well, 121 million and 999,000 and 999 because I bought that plastic piece. It's guaranteed fit. If it's guaranteed to fit. eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. The guaranteed fit is available to U.S. customers. Exclusions apply. ebaymotors.com. Gary Patterson will be a head football coach in the Division One, maybe by October. My prediction, my I was asked recently by a dear friend, of both of ours actually, in Waco, Texas, said, hey, what is your biggest, hottest sports take for this next year? And mine is that the Baylor Bears, led by Gary Patterson, who's interim head coach after Dave Aranda, doesn't get it done, that he will lead the Baylor Bears to a bowl game because of the coaching acumen that he, he was. He's one of the greatest Big 12 coaches of all time. Top 10 for yeah. sure. Gary Patterson Won a lot of games, and that's one of the best Big 12 teams ever in 2014 TCU that lost to Baylor. And I also believe that Bobby Petrino, interim head coach at Arkansas, will meet Gary Patterson in the Texas Bowl. Crazy. Um, when you, host of Locked on Baylor, Cameron Stewart, mm -hmm. here, Gary Patterson, head coach, Baylor University, does it blow your mind, or are we on the cusp of this? Is that why Mac Rhodes brought him in? Well, look, I love that possibility. Mm -hmm. I do. And if nothing else, just for the pictures and the memes. Like, if if he doesn't win a game, but we still have that, it's still kind of funny. Yeah. That said, my hot take is that that's not going to happen, even if uh -huh. Aranda's fired. Real hot take. Real hot I take. Think, I think if Dave Aranda is fired during the season, which which is a possibility, uh, I think they will go with Jake Spavadol instead. Wait, 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 wait. Which seems crazy. Can yes. I, hold on. Yes, we got, please. Hope. Oh, whoop, oh, oh, whoop. Oh. We have Rose Bowl winning coach mm -hmm. Gary Patterson mm -hmm. or transfer portal guru who couldn't win more than three games at Texas State, Jake Spavital. Gonna have to unpack that one for me. Yes. Yes. Well, look, okay. This is not the only part of it, but Spavital was hired first. And I say that to say sure. they, they made it clear through unnamed people that they yep. wanted a head coach guy with head coaching experience to come on and be the offensive coordinator, which I thought limited them. Yep. Right. I know you, yeah. mm. you going to tell me the record. Well, I was Wasn't just going to say like technically Phil Steele has been a yeah, head college football true. coach. There that's have been true. many people have done it at least a little bit. <laughs> that's true. Um, what was the guy? Oh, now I can't remember his name. The old defensive Phil Bennett, Phil Bennett yeah. is a head coach. Yeah. Just for a second. Um, I don't know I, if that I, means we need to, that that was what we consider a head coaching experience. 
Right. Look, if I'm thinking, okay, the guy who's going to mm-hmm. take over in the middle of the season will also be the coach two seasons after this. I'm I'm all in. Gary Patterson could right. take this over and take them to a meaningful bowl game within a season. Like mm-hmm. I I truly believe that because he's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best coaches of my lifetime. Um, but I think if Baylor is moving on from Dave Aranda, they're going to do a, a clean break, even if it's in the middle of the season. So that is just everyone ride out the rest of this year. And then we are going a completely different direction. And if yep. you're going to do that, you're probably not doing it with a 60 something year old and Gary Patterson. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I think like, you know, if, if let's say they're, they're two and four. And so there's a chance that they can make a bowl game, right? An outside chance, but a chance. I'm I'm probably thinking Jake Spavadol has got this fun offense going. He can he can rally the troops. He, you know he's young. He's got some people on board here through the transfer portal because Dave's probably not doing that. It's probably Jake Spavadol. Uh, he's got a fun, exciting brand of football. Maybe we can get these guys on board and get them to just cut it loose, put up 45, 50 points a game for a couple of games, and. And we ride this thing out to a bowl game and then go in a different direction. That's just yeah. the way I think Baylor will think about it. If they decide as Gary Patterson, I'm also happy with that. Too. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And I think okay. there, there are a lot of people who are... I oh, truly you know, believe it would be Spavadol. I truly do. For as, better or for a, worse. A Baylor grad myself, I, I often get the, oh, you're just resentful you know, against Baylor, just negative toward Baylor. Oh, they were 3-9 and nine last year. Um, and, and, and I... Can't can't forget if you're just tuning into the show and didn't listen to the twice last segment when I said I don't know how many games they'll win. Yeah, I um, can't, can't ignore that either. I had dinner with a Baylor fan. Oh, we, here's your little here's a fun caveat. I had dinner with a Baylor fan last night, and guy's son was with us. His son's probably ten. And first thing his son says to me, un, I never met this kid. He's like, "Hey, do you think they're gonna fire Dave Veranda?" <laughs> Like, which is a question I would have asked when I was 10 to someone who has a podcast. I would have done the same thing. And you were like, like, they haven't already? It's like, uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't feel bad for saying the three and nine coach probably should have been retained. And I don't, I mean, the kid's not a bad fan. He just also no. wants to see winning. It's not like the kid resents Baylor. He just wants to be good. I just, that's I a would weird like, thing for a lot of Baylor people to understand. I would like if Baylor was good. The people are like, yeah, oh, you know what? They, everybody, they want him. You know, he's, he's a nice guy. Okay. I just like to win. Well, I want him to be successful too, but I'm we're not rooting for the guy to get three fired. Losing seasons in four years. Except if he goes one and three, then I am rooting for the guy to get fired. I'm sorry. I just like when, when the team that I root for wins and I, I, I'm the Gary Patterson deal. The, the one thing that comes to mind for me, here's the optic. He's the head football coach to Baylor. You can't really do that. If you're Mac Rhodes, you probably don't do that. That's that's uh, you know because the sect of Baylor fans. Are I do. Like, I do think there is some of like Gary Patterson that might not even want that as badly as I do think he wants to be. And he said he wants to be a head coach again. Right. Right. Um. I. I don't know. I do think there would be some if part of him that's yes, like, yeah. uh, I'm good in my role right now. I'm probably going to get some calls after this season anyway. But you know, he thinks uh, about it. You know they've all sure. thought I mean, about it. As soon as the day got hired, you can't, it was like, right? Oh, you can't, well. you can't take the job and not think about it. Like well. him or Mac Rhodes or anyone else on the coaching staff or anyone in the stadium week one has to think about that when he gets hired. The only reason I do believe that it will be Gary Patterson, and I have a more outsider perspective than you do. You do, but it it is too deep in this. Mac Rhodes, if Dave Rand is fired, is on the hot seat as an athletic director. There are questions mm-hmm. about what because he decided to retain him after three and nine. And if the press release reads Jake Spavital nine and 27 as a head football coach. And then the Mac Rhodes quote is we understand that Jake is a great head coach and great leader with head coaching experience. And everyone looks around the room and goes, Gary Patterson's sitting right there. <laughs> this press release. That would be, tough. Been that would be a so, tough. so different. Um, then at that point you start to again, put in question the decision-making of Mac Rhodes. And I don't, after you retain the three and nine guy and take a chance on him, I don't, I don't mind saying, "Hey, we are proceed with caution." Yeah, I get that. It is weird to promote Jake Spavadol and have Gary Patterson in the facility every day. Right. Uh, but I think looks- there's just too much weird. There's too much weirdness around it for me. Maybe I am too deep, but I would have it like 60-40 Spavadol over Patterson. Okay, sixty forty Spavadol. Uh, it's Cameron Stewart at it's Real Cam Stewart. It's not a bad thing. 
Um, pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, coming up tomorrow, let's do some more sports on Locked On Big Twelve and Locked On Baylor. Find oh, Cameron boy, at Real Cam Stewart. Home. Or the Cam Show with Rogue Media releasing limited release until football season, gearing you up for all things, not just Big 12, but across the landscape of sports in general. And um, thanks for making us your first listen every single day. Thanks for joining the show. Mustache looks good. Thanks. Appreciate it. This has been and always will be. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Locked on Baylor and locked on Dose Grande.